literally one rhyme here. A Brief History of Time by Stephen W. Hawking. I listened to the audiobook version of this. I started out reading the ebook and I had trouble staying interested. And then I came across the audiobook and I figured that would at least. Uh, give my eyes a rest, and <laughs> uh, the audiobook is read by Michael Jackson. That's right, the King of Pop himself, Michael Jackson. <laughs> no, it's a different Michael Jackson. <laughs> Believe it or not, for like a short while, I actually thought it was the Michael Jackson. <laughs> I think that would have been cool, though, right? I mean, I don't even know if Michael Jackson ever narrated any kind of audiobook or something or <laughs> that would have been cool I, I feel like that would have uh, held my interest a lot more in this <laughs> I mean not that I wasn't at least uh, interested in it to begin with because I had always wanted to read it and I will say I'm glad that I finally did even though I read like a portion of the ebook and then the rest of it I listened to via audiobook. Um, and I will admit, there's only like maybe, I don't know, a certain percentage of this that I understood. The rest of it, I, I gotta admit, just went right over my head. <laughs> it's. There's a lot of stuff about the Big Bang Theory, uh, not the TV show. <laughs> There's an actual theory about the Big Bang in which, you know, different scientists, you know, believe that it, it explains how the universe was created and in which there was just this burst of energy and, and matter and then eventually, like, it all, it slowly started to coalesce. I believe that's the right word. And eventually that's how the stars formed and uh, galaxies and planets, solar systems. All that good stuff. <laughs> or bad stuff, depending on, I guess, if you're an optimist or a pessimist. <laughs> uh but I did find, you know, the parts that I didn't understand, it actually made me think a lot. Like, actually, actually made me ponder certain things for, I want to say, like, more than a couple hours. Uh, I mean, uh, one thing I, I, I did like that I found, I think, the most interesting uh, was there's a part in which he... Uh, kind of talks about the fact that, uh, you know, as human beings, we like to believe that everything has a, a beginning, middle, and end. And he believe he essentially, Stephen Hawking essentially wrote about that. He believes uh, this can't always be applied. It can't be applied to everything. Especially when, especially when you're trying to understand certain things, uh, such as the creation of the universe or the, you know, the creation of time and space. So he believes that you can't really think of something like the creation of the universe that as having a beginning, middle and middle and end, or at least certainly not a beginning or end. In other words, he kind of puts forth, puts forth this, uh, I would say kind of like side theory or, you know, it doesn't really go into great detail, but just kind of mentions that it is very possible that the creation of the universe didn't have a, an exact beginning or even probably, you know, it is possible that it didn't have a beginning at all. And, uh, kind of like, you know, he, he believes that it's possible that well of course first of all he also believes that 
time itself doesn't necessarily have to have a beginning and an end. Time is like a constant cycle and, you know, just with different reference points, I guess. Uh, of course, I would say, like, you know, he, he even mentions that this, w this wouldn't even be accurate, but it's kind of like it's the easiest way to explain something like this to uh, the lay person, you know, to people who don't really, you know, for those of us who aren't physicists and scientists of any kind. Uh, so essentially, you know, time is this never ending cycle and there's just different reference points and in all these different points are pretty much the different, I guess you could say, life cycles, kind of like cycles within cycles and uh, such as say like the, the time period we're living in now here on earth uh, we're right now we're all a part of one particular cycle here on earth and which is ultimately just part of a much bigger cycle you could say a much bigger cycle life cycle of the solar system we're a part of also the galaxy we're a part of ultimately the universe we're a part of we're a part of and and also too very very likely an even bigger cycle that could quite possibly supersede the universe we live in possibly you know, even beyond whatever other universes may or may not exist. <laughs> uh, I know that, that could seem like a very hard thing to ponder, but I, know, I guess for me, like, uh, it's something that, uh, I mean, something that even before I, I actually read this or listened to this audiobook, uh, I had actually somewhat thought about before, pondered a little bit before. and So while, you know, it, it was still hard for me to imagine... I was still already kind of familiar with it, so because uh, like I said, you know, I've always been that that kind of person that you know sometimes like if I'm really interested in something, whether, whether it's an idea, a theory, uh, sometimes I do tend to uh, overanalyze it and think about it a lot to the point, you know, just until I get tired of thinking about it and. <laughs> It's kind of like how I've always been, I believe. Even when I was a little kid and... Uh, I mean, obviously when I was a kid, I had no idea what philosophy was or physics or... <laughs> but no, sometimes, you know, I would get obsessed with different things like cartoons and action figures, comic books, and, you know... Yeah, and even when, like, I wouldn't... Like, if I wasn't uh, reading a particular comic book... It was like I would still kind of think about it, you know, all, all day long. Like I would think about different characters of a comic book or in a cartoon that I recently saw. and <laughs> So, but I digress. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess, I guess I bring that up because most of what Stephen Hawking uh, mentions in this book... Uh, kind of remind me of that like it's kind of like his own it's like a collection of the things that he thinks about and obsesses about on a on a daily basis and uh which is which is kind of cool i consider it to be pretty cool although obviously i know that not everybody tends to think in the same way and uh, but still, you know, as I consider it to be fascinating, interesting, intriguing. I mean, I figure, you know, there's got to at least be, you know, granted, you know, like you figure most of mankind, most of the human race, you know, we're all hustling and bustling, uh, struggling to live every day just to, you know, just to try to eke out our own 
uh, space within this otherwise uh, messed up reality. It's, <laughs> you know, uh, and yeah, obviously most of us don't have time to ponder certain things or, you know, or even bother to try to understand certain things. But that's why there's people like Stephen Hawking, other physicists like him. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is another one that came to mind for me while I was listening to this. Of course, I do realize that Stephen Hawking wrote this uh, way before, I think, definitely way before Neil deGrasse Tyson wrote or published anything. Um... But I don't know, I've always considered it to be very fun and interesting and uh, intriguing. Uh, it definitely brought up a lot of interesting interesting things for me. Some stuff, like, I, I can't even, like, really still wrap my mind around, but I feel like I might be able to wrap my mind around them, like, maybe in another couple of years or so. <laughs> uh, it's... You know, I mean, I do feel like there was like a portion of this that to me if it wasn't anything new because I I had already read about in previous books and also um pretty much uh seen other people talk about other physicists such as like I mentioned Neil deGrasse Tyson. There's also another physicist I like is uh his name's Michio Kaku. Uh, that's another guy too. I should definitely, uh, read and review some of his stuff too. I, I read some of his stuff before, but it's been a while since the last time I did. I think Michio Kaku has a new book coming out, in fact. So, yeah. And his stuff is always like, uh, he's able to explain a lot of complicated things in a very easy easy to comprehend kind of way so yeah I think like with Stephen Hawking uh, as far as when he wrote this I think it was more like he wasn't too concerned about trying to dumb it down for people or <laughs> uh, which I can I can understand to a certain extent and I mean, yeah, overall, it's like, uh, as far as the rating goes, I guess I would give it a four out of five stars just because I like that. It made me think a lot. And I do believe that, you know, if anybody, if you like, if you like books and about physics and creation of the universe and a lot of theoretical stuff, uh, then no doubt you'll probably like this. Uh, otherwise, I would say, yeah, it's, you probably won't like it. <laughs> but, uh, I think that pretty much do it for my review. It's, it's, like I said, there's a lot of stuff in it, you know, other stuff too that I found just as interesting too, so about black holes and the life cycle of stars uh life cycle of galaxies and uh oh yeah also the whole expansion of the universe the fact that our universe is what what Stephen Hawking believes in I guess a lot of other physicists too believe that our universe is expanding it's constantly expanding stretching out I guess is the easiest way to understand it and that eventually it's possible that it will get to a point where it'll expand so much that it'll essentially like just collapse. And during that collapse, nobody knows what, what'll happen or, because I mean, by then, you know, obviously it's, it's very likely that the human race will no, will no longer exist. It could even be likely that there'll be very little uh, signs of life by that point uh, throughout the universe. You know, of course, that's just a theory. It's not, you know, it's not set in stone or anything. It's, it's <laughs> but yeah, overall, I mean, again, I give it four out of five stars, so that'll do it. I don't want to ramble on and on too much about 
some of these theories, but yeah. That goes my review of uh, Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. So, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. As always, till next time, don't forget to keep it real, keep on rocking, and peace.